I survived a nuclear accident, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Hell no, I won't glow, Survivor, Three Mile Island. It happened 40 years ago. I was in kindergarten. The Three Mile Island Generating Station is a nuclear power plant that sits on the Susquehanna River in central Pennsylvania, not far from the city of Harrisburg. In the early morning of March 28, 1979, a series of mechanical and human failures resulted in a loss of coolant water in one of the plant's two reactors. It became overheated. It started to melt. And an unknown quantity of radioactive gas was released into the atmosphere. CBS reports, danger at Three Mile Island. Please stay indoors with your windows closed. Some experts also believe that a giant hydrogen bubble was forming in the reactor, and that that bubble could burst like a bomb. That didn't happen, but still. To make matters worse, the operators of the plant tried to keep a wrap on what was happening. It didn't help that a movie called The China Syndrome had been released just weeks earlier. Soon, you will know. The China Syndrome. The China Syndrome starred Jane Fonda and Michael Douglas and Jack Lemmon, and it was about an accident at a nuclear power plant. It had this line in it. Render an area the size of Pennsylvania permanently uninhabitable. Spooky, right? This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. The worst nuclear power plant accident of the atomic age. It was, and I hope it remains, America's worst commercial nuclear power accident. Oh, and on top of that, Pennsylvania's governor said that pregnant women and preschool-aged children should leave the area around the plant, an evacuation. My family lived about 10 miles away from Three Mile Island, so we left town for a couple of weeks. I called my mom to ask her what she remembered. Oh. Hi, Mom. I was wondering if you could tell me what you remember from the accident 40 years ago. It was the scariest night of my life because we had the TV on and there, and that was all that was on about this bubble. What do we do? It was pretty frightening. My knees knocked together all night long. I did not sleep awake. Yeah, that was, uh, that was scary. Three Mile Island was the biggest story in the world. And then it started to fade. Families returned to the area. Eventually, the plant restarted its undamaged reactor, and things sort of got back to normal. But not for the people who lived through it. A lot of locals think that the accident is to blame for their health problems. Christine Lehman helps run a Facebook group called Three Mile Island Survivors. In the group, uh, the members all get together and they talk about their illnesses. Uh, they talk about different things that are going on in their families. I would say a lot of them do believe that that accident had something to do with their illness. A professor I talked to had this to say. I completely and totally understand why the people who live near the plant uh, did not necessarily believe the official story. Both the state and the federal government and the nuclear industry as a whole tried to reassure people who live near the plant that they had never been exposed to dangerous levels of radiation during the accident and that there was in fact nothing to fear. But a number of people who lived in the community were convinced that in fact they had sustained radiological injury and, and had gotten sick because of radiation exposure. My family and I have been lucky. We haven't had any big health problems, but something like a nuclear accident can affect you in other ways. Some people talk about having PTSD from the accident. Me, I can't quite let go of it. And so, I know this sounds silly, but I collect stuff. Souvenirs, atomic tchotchkes. This is pretty interesting. It is a, that's a plate. It's, it's shaped like, like a cooling tower. Good to the last atom. In case you wanted a commemorative ashtray uh, from a nuclear accident, um, they made them, and uh, I have one. This is Atomic Polka Blast. Uh, these guys are psyched. I actually know nothing from it because it's all here. <laughs> I mean, everything I need to remember is not good. I live it every day. Canned air, they were selling canned air. And it's like, okay, I don't know who would want radiation in a can, but <laughs> that's up to them. I do have uh, one of those cans. Original canned radiation. This is, it's a can, it's, it's empty. 
uh, as far as I can tell. And someone has basically made a clever wrapper to go around it. It's a little bit sun, sun bleached, but it says the original canned radiation, Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania, contains 185 milligrams of radiation, 19% radiant iodine, 14 ounces of radioactive xenon, 10% radioactive nitro, and one hydrogen gas bubble canned on location at TMI, at Three Mile Island. So what's the point of all of this? Why bother with all of this weird stuff? You hear about all of these trinkets, but what you have is this really funny thing where in the realm of material culture and popular culture, uh, the, the, the sort of trinkets became memorializations of the accident. That's one of the ways in which the accident has strangely and kind of humorously left its mark on the culture. She has a point. These souvenirs, they're like memento mori, reminders that I will die, and reminders of how I and everyone I knew might have died, and in that sense, they're tokens to ward off that fate. Maybe someday I'll donate my collection to a museum or a historical society or something. In the meantime, it continues to grow. So I'm going to go on eBay right now and see what, what they have, see if there's anything new. Oh, this is kind of striking. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Nick Poppy.